Welcome to Dirt Sweat and Gears. We are back here with the Facebook Marketplace Miata, and we got a lot going on. Last time, we completely overhauled the front suspension of this car, and now it rides a little low for my taste. But we're going to circle back to this and get started on the rear. Uh, now, there's a lot to do on the rear. Uh, it's more than just the suspension. Let's go take a look. I have first removed the axle nut. This actually came off really easy because it really wasn't bent on there very well at all. So whoever put this on uh, didn't lock it in correctly. Uh, but first thing you notice when you look at the axle is, well, the outer boots cracked the hell. Uh, that's, uh, th that's bad enough. But let's circle in to the other side. Let me get here on the ground. Ow, knock all my shit over. And oh God, that hurt. I think I just cut my knee. Anyway, the inside here, this boot is also cracked and a little more than cracked. It's broken and it's starting to throw grease everywhere. The other axle is pretty much non-existent. So yeah, we got to address that for sure. Uh, the rear diff, we have already changed out the fluid. We're going to check the fluid while we're under here uh, just to make sure that it's still at level. I might want to flush it again just in case uh, because it was really nasty when I opened that up. Um, that It just did not make me happy at all. Uh, but we've also got all kinds of really cool suspension parts for this. Uh, so we're going to essentially just tear everything apart back here. So where should we start? Uh, we should start uh, by taking off the brake calipers and hanging them off to the side with some bailing wire just like I did on the front. This, we'll be able to take this apart real easily uh, and then undo the shock, undo the sway bar, uh, and take out the lower control arm. I don't think this is going to be as complicated as the front end because this is a very simple uh, suspension setup. So let's just get started. Um, I've already got the new coilover springs. I've already got all the bushings. This, there's really no reason that I'm going to be delayed too much on this. I am waiting on axles, but they're also very easy to replace. So uh, this should not be the worst thing I've ever done. And I've already painted on the inside too. You see it's all nice and black here uh, because there was all that pink overspray on the underside. I also repainted the panels back here. It just looks so much better. Anyway, let's get to work. So we've actually got some really good news that has kicked this car up to the front of the line and made it a high priority with a ridiculous deadline because I can't have it any other way. My wife just landed a job and it's a good job. Uh, the only problem is that this job is all the way across town. It's about 50 miles each way across LA down south. So she needs a car stat and I am not comfortable having her do that trip in the Jeep. I can't afford the gas even if I were comfortable. Uh, definitely not okay with the Prelude making that kind of hike uh, just because I know it can, but this car is my baby. I don't, I don't want to do that. Uh, so we're going to fix this car up. I'm already like most of the way through it. I've got the motor completely done. We just did the front suspension last time. Uh, now today we're going to do the rear. Uh, we got to do the axles. We've also got some uh, really cool stuff in terms of, you know, extra reliability and creature comforts coming in. Uh, I, I have already received a triple core radiator, which we're going to put in this car because even though it's a stock motor, I want the cooling system to be able to handle uh, an LS swap because who knows, maybe one day I'll do that. I've also got uh, an AC compressor and an evaporator core and an expansion valve coming in. So she is going to have a fully functioning AC on 134 Freon, which is uh, very exciting uh, because I've changed out already uh, the uh, condenser, the dryer, and all of the little seals. Uh, I think I may need to replace the uh, valves, but we're going to address that when it comes time to charge AC. 
Uh, also, I have a full clutch kit on the way, I, including a master and slave cylinder and steel braided clutch line. So that's all coming up for this car uh, and it has to be done fast. You know, I could have had this done at any point in the last year, but I had to wait until it became an emergency. Hmm. Anyway, let's get started. Well, the suspension is out. I've got the upper and lower arms here and uh, this uh, sway bar end link. As far as that is concerned, it's more or less the same story as the front end. And the uh, splines came out of the rear end when I took the axle out. But you may be looking at this and asking, hey, where's the knuckle? Uh, well, that's, uh, that's an entirely different story. So we're going to come out here and take a look at the first steering knuckle. And, uh, well, I have a 20 ton press and I still couldn't get the shaft out of the knuckle. Uh, so I put the nut on backwards and thought, hey, I can always just uh, put the nut on backwards, hit it with a hammer, and I'll be able to break that loose without removing, without having to damage the knuckle. Well, all I managed to do was permanently attach the nut onto the shaft. And it's really the same story with this side over here, uh, except I didn't try so hard because once I realized it was just completely seized, uh, it kind of, reality kind of hit me and I realized I need to replace these knuckles. So I did. I ordered rebuilt knuckles from Treasure Coast Miata and they're going to be in well, sometime within the next week, I hope. God, I hope. Uh, new axles are arriving very soon. Uh, so this is a kind of a huge bump in the road, uh, not only because of the delay, but because of the cost. I, I have spent way more money than I care to admit on this car. Um, and that was a huge expense. But it'll be worth it because I'll have a new rear suspension. <sighs> but anyway, while we wait for that, there's still plenty to do. I still have to press out the bushings uh, here and clean these all up. I can get these all ready to go uh, without having any of this stuff in. So it's been a couple of days and I'm still waiting on those rear knuckles, but uh, I can give an update. Uh, you see here we have the control arms, the upper and lower. Uh, they are nice and uh, painted. They also have new bushings. So uh, I used, again, uh, a ball joint press, a hand press from uh, the auto parts store, rented it. I think I actually got a good rhythm uh, figured out for removing the old bushings. And that is, um, you know, in all the videos that they talk about how to remove bushings, they say you have to heat it up. Well, one thing that didn't click in my mind was you had to heat it up and then immediately go press it out. Um, and that's because they say it's because uh, it releases the uh, bonding between the metal and the rubber. And I believe it. Uh, I just, uh, for some reason, it didn't click in my head when I was doing the front that I needed to press them out while they were still hot. I would go heat all four corners up, uh, like in that case, and then let it cool and then go press them out and I would have problems. Uh, but doing it while it's still hot, I would just do one side and then go press it out. Do the other side, press it out. Heat up the other corner, press it out. And uh, it came out really quick. I was able to get it all done within, I don't know, an hour or two. Uh, and then I got the new ones pressed in. It's all painted, ready to go back in. Uh, so uh, today we're probably going to put this back in and hopefully uh, have it ready to go before... Uh, the knuckles arrive because we also have axles. So I can have the axles also hung in the car and ready to accept the uh, new knuckles. And from there, I can start to assemble the suspension and really kind of get progress, a, a lot of progress out of the way uh, while I wait for these parts. I'm still waiting on the knuckles, but uh, I made a lot of progress on the rear end. 
Uh, you see I've got the uh, new coilover shocks and springs in and I have the new CV axles in. I've got everything, uh, the top, upper and lower arm hung. Uh, but again, I'm still waiting on the hub uh, to fit this all together. On the inside of the CV axle, I bolted that up using blue thread locker. Comes in a red tube because uh, we are, we love intuition here. Uh, everything is just so intuitive. Uh, and red thread locker, by the way, comes in a blue tube. So that's great. Uh, on the other side, uh, pretty much got the same progress. Did exactly the same thing. It looks really good so far. Uh, I made a mistake up here in the upper perch. Uh, you see how I've only got one nut up here? Well, that's because the smaller nut that's on this one fell into the abyss. So, so when I put the car on the ground, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take those off, uh, take the smaller one out to uh, the hardware store, match it up, get a new one, and I'll be able to uh, fix that proper. Down here, I've uh, put the new bushings in the sway bar end links, and I've put the bushings on the new sway bar, except I am missing one bracket. I am missing one bracket. It could be anywhere. Uh, it could be underneath the prelude. It could be underneath the wheel of a prelude. Uh, but it is definitely not on the original sway bar. So uh, I really hope I can find that because if I can't, I'm going to be delayed yet again. Well, I'm still waiting on the rear knuckles for the Miata. Uh, from Treasure Coast Miata. I believe I should be hearing from them in the next few days because they just shipped out the clutch pack that I had ordered from them. Uh, and I ordered that the day before I ordered uh, two knuckles from them. So uh, I'm going to give it a few more days. If I don't hear anything, I'll call them. Uh, so in the meantime, I've been trying to do some other projects. I was trying to go for an easy win with the stereo. But then I quickly realized that none of these wires do anything. Like the power wire that's supposed to come out of the Miata doesn't provide power. It certainly doesn't provide enough power to start up the head unit. So I really have no idea what's going on. All of the fuses in the car look fine, uh, but uh, this just doesn't work. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just run a whole new power source, run a whole new switch source, uh, a whole new circuit for this thing, and then uh, figure out what the speakers are doing. If I get nothing from the speakers, then I'm gonna rewire the speakers as well. That's gonna require taking the car apart, but it's not uh, intellectually difficult. It's just uh, time consuming. So uh, because this is kind of a low priority thing, uh, I decided to shift focus onto this Mishimoto three row radiator here. So I have it here in the passenger seat because I have it test fitted. Uh, I have checked it for leaks and you'll see why I checked it for leaks in just a moment. Uh, when I was test fitting it, I kind of uh, gouged a few fins. So uh, that wasn't fun. So I went and, uh, uh, so I went and flow tested it and uh, it checks out, it's not leaking from there. So I think I'm gonna be okay. Uh, this was not cheap at all, but it came with a three row radiator and associated fans. I've also installed compressor down here. So uh, I put new uh, rubber O-rings on the lines, reinstalled the lines, and they're uh, both in underneath. Um, I'm having a little bit of a, an unknown with this bracket here. I'm not exactly sure what to do with it. I'm going to try to figure it out once I get the radiator in. Uh, but next up, I just have to uh, put the new belt on. So I had to get a belt that worked for both power steering and air conditioning. So that's going to go on this morning. And then we're going to put the radiator back in, uh, fill it up with probably, you know, 15 gallons worth of coolant. Uh, one thing I did notice was down here, there's, uh, one thing I did notice was that I had a small leak down here with this, uh, output pipe. Uh, you can kind of see it, uh, where it mates up to the engine block. Uh, that bolt was just loose. So I went ahead and, uh, tightened both of those bolts 
and hopefully that's going to stop that minor little leak. And so once I get this radiator in, my, my hope is that I will never have to worry about this car overheating. Uh, it is a three row radiator core. A, a triple row radiator is way overkill for a stock engine. Uh, th that thing is meant to cool off an LS swap. So um, I don't think I'm going to have any trouble at all here. Uh, once that's all together, we're going to go back into the interior and uh, install the evaporator core and expansion valve for the air conditioning. And then this will be uh, pretty much ready to go uh, mechanically. Look at how pretty this Mishimoto radiator is. It's a three row radiator on a stock engine. I've got it all together. Uh, and I have it filled with coolant. I did have to trim the lower radiator hose just a little bit uh, because the uh, outlet or yeah, the outlet for the radiator sticks out just a little bit farther, obviously because the radiator itself is wider. Uh, that's really the only thing I had to do to the car other than fix things that were, uh, you know, broken when I got there. Um, yeah, so I'm ready to move on uh, to the next part of this project. And so I've got a wiring project going on and uh, that's for two reasons. I've got those fans, which I do not trust the original circuit. Uh, I think it's going to blow a fuse just like I, my prelude did and that's going to leave me stranded on the side of the road but I've also got my radio my radio um, I don't know if it's the same situation or it's just not getting enough power to operate but uh, none of the wires that are supposed to be for 12 volt power are uh, starting up the radio so I uh, am going to just run a new circuit uh, I do have to tear apart the passenger side of the dash anyway because I also need to install the new um, evaporator core and expansion valve. So once I remove the evaporator core and expansion valve I will run the circuit on the passenger side of the car and uh, kind of cross over to the driver's side maybe underneath the hood um, that might be kind of ghetto Maybe I'll just do it under here. I don't know. I'm going to figure that out uh, when the time comes. I need to do something where I can get uh, the wiring from the battery side to the driver's side in the front of the car. So it's going to be something somewhere it needs to cross over, whether that's in the front or the back. I don't know. Uh, I don't care right now. Uh, I just need to tear this apart and uh, figure that out once I get there. I brought the electrical uh, panel that I'm building out here. See, this is the distribution block. Uh, these are the fuses. Uh, these two fuses are for each fan. I'm running them as independent circuits to uh, help ensure that they don't fail. This is gonna be my new radio circuit, and these are the uh, relays to the new fans. So uh, their resting place is gonna be somewhere around here which means I can actually run wires as long as I give enough uh, play inside the trunk here. I won't have a problem just running wires out there to get it all tested. So that's going to be the next stage for uh, this wiring project. I'm going to go ahead and remove the evaporator core and uh, the expansion valve for the air conditioning. That will uh, also give me a place to run the wires. So uh, I'm kind of doing like a, like a two for one here. Um, I'm going to replace the AC stuff. And once that's replaced, before I put the panels back on, I'll run the new wires. Uh, I got into a flow. So I really didn't uh, even think to stop and take a video of my progress. But uh, the new AC evaporator core and uh, expansion valve are in. And it is reconnected over here. Uh, I did have trouble with this big bolt. You see it's all scratched up because I had to tighten it with a big ass crescent wrench. And my main concern with the big crescent wrench was I kept hitting this uh, connection up here. Uh, it, this was disconnected. So uh, I am a little bit afraid that I scarred it beyond repair, but there's only one way to find out. Here's the old unit. 
I think one of the troubles that I had was that these fins are so fragile that you just barely touch them and they bend. See? Watch. I mean, so you could be working on something over here and then turn it by accident and then uh, crush a bunch of fins. Uh, so that was pretty much the biggest challenge was uh, this stuff being so damn fragile. Uh, same thing with these hoses. They bent really easily. Uh, so um, you got to be really, really careful with this. Uh, and yeah, but I got this all taken care of, uh, the new units in. Uh, so now we are working on a new circuit for both the radio, which is over there underneath the hood, and uh, the two upgraded fans. So if you remember from my Prelude, I upgraded the fans in my Prelude and just immediately started blowing fuses. Uh, so the car would overheat even with upgraded fans. This has an enormous radiator and upgraded fans. And I got to tell you, I just don't trust the stock circuit, especially with the trouble that I'm having with the radio. Uh, the radio, for some reason, uh, none of the connections are giving it enough power to turn on. So um, I know how this thing is supposed to wire up. I wired it up according to the wiring diagram and it still wouldn't turn on. So I'm going to run a whole new power circuit to this radio. Uh, and uh, we're just going to branch off of that on our way up to the fan here. We're going to run, it's going to have its own wires, uh, but it's going to run in the same conduit and we'll branch off the conduit underneath the dash. We're going to come out right here in this little spot that I got started. Uh, and I'm going to use this little piece of uh, old hose as an insulation and the conduit's going to run right through it and the wire's going to run inside the conduit. So this is going to be as clean as I can get it, uh, as clean as I can reasonably make it. Uh, and we're going to run it somewhere around in here to kind of tuck it away. Maybe follow this conduit down here and then down here and we're going to con connect to the fans over here. And uh, the power signal for this thing is actually going to be the original fan circuit, which is somewhere in here. It's somewhere in here. I'll dig it out. Uh, but we're going to just run that right across the radiator. I can zip tie to these brackets right here. And then zip tie to here. Here. Uh, probably go underneath the... Or over. It doesn't really matter. And then uh, I think it'll look pretty nice. And it will certainly function. Alright, so I have everything run as kind of like a, a test run. Uh, this is obviously not final but wow look how shiny that is uh but you see i've got both of the fans wired up this is the original uh fan for this side um the two fans were wired together so i would not be surprised if even the stock fans both on the same circuit they should have been on separate circuits uh, i would not be surprised if the original fuse were to blow uh, so i'm really glad i did this project uh, so here is, uh, this is the uh, power out of the old fan. This is now the switch. Uh, so uh, the ground is over here, down down there. And it just runs into this conduit, splits off, goes to ground. This conduit runs into the firewall. I am waiting on a grommet, which is also why I do not have these secured in a plug. I went and bought a grommet because my little stupid idea of using an old piece of hose uh, is just way, way unprofessional. So down here, I have it uh, running under the, f well, not under the floor yet, but it will run under the floor uh, once I have the yellow wire for the radio. The yellow wire is going to be the constant power. Uh, the white is, again, a branch off of the 12 volt power for the radio. So we have it running to the back of the car into this random hole that I found. And in the back of the car, again, it's really messy. Uh, don't mind the mess. Uh, I will be cleaning it up. Uh, this I'm going to mount uh, this panel of uh, relays and fuses straight to here. That'll make it really easy to remove, make it really easy to service and uh, it will be just a dead simple installation. I don't need to drill holes. Well, I don't need to drill it into this thing, which uh, I have no idea how to get to the other side of. Uh, 
Uh, here is the uh, uh, power distribution box. Uh, runs to a battery uh, terminal. Uh, this runs to the front of the car. This runs to uh, this box here. So uh, really, so far, uh, seems pretty good. Uh, once I get the uh, appropriate colors of wire in here, uh, I'm going to match up. Uh, I'm going to wrap this red wire that connects to this blue wire in blue tape once that tape arrives. So this is all uh, uh, connected. Let's see if it works. And I shit you not, this is the first time I'm trying this. So. I hear fans. This is blowing in the right direction. That's blowing in the right direction. Oh my God, I did something right. Uh, I think it's time to call it a day. Now, that was a massive effort and it worked. Uh, I'm, I'm no joke, not lying on the first try. So I want to take a break. We're actually going to wrap it up for this week's video. It's really kind of disappointing that I didn't get to call anything done, but I made a lot of progress on a lot of projects on this car and uh, really uh, wasted no time uh, despite there being a huge delay here. Uh, so I am really happy with uh, my progress. I was able to knock a lot of things off this list. Uh, once this is all done, I've just got the transmission and this car will be ready for a stress test. So hopefully I'll have a very reliable uh, 1990 Miata very soon. If you like what you see here, like, share, subscribe, comment. If you don't like what you see here, maybe I should have sent this car to a junkyard uh, as soon as I got it. Maybe I should have never gotten this car. Uh, let me know in the comments below. It'll help the algorithm. It'll help my channel. And you'll get to tell me what an idiot I am. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week.